Aloha from Kilipohe, Kikani Aloha. Well, back working on the rusty dusty Massey Ferguson tractor. Today we are working on the um, loader. The hydraulic cylinders on the loader are in pretty bad shape. This one, well, we'll see the worst of them in a minute, but this one is pretty bad. You can see it's got uh, rust spots on the rod. I don't know what the gland looks like, but we're going to take this thing out of here and get it on the bench and see what we need to do, which is no doubt going to be a lot. Let's get to it. Okay, well, so the first thing is to get the um, the piston disconnected. I've, I mean, <laughs> obviously the, uh, the hydraulic lines are really no problem. I think that one was totally busted. I have new hydraulic lines uh, that I've purchased, um, but they're not going to go in until everything is taken care of. Uh, I have new steel hydraulic lines for inside there, and... But, okay, let's get on to this hydraulic cylinder. Uh, basically, just take this nut out and uh, knock the pin out. That is how the other one went. Let's see how this one goes. With this tractor, our stuff is really, really rusty. So, a lot of times i got to hit the, the wrench onto... The nuts and the nuts just shear off a lot of the times that looks like I don't know what it is with these pins but the pins are very free and I should be able to snock this yeah Cylinder free. I greased uh, all of these fittings the other day just to make sure that this would go more smoothly. I don't know if it helped, but that's what I did. That's an 11 millimeter. Makes any difference. Okay, so back on the bench here, uh, we're going to take off this hydraulic line and we'll see what the real issue is here with these guys. If they'll come off. See the amount of rust on there is just outrageous. So these are O-ring bosses. Let's just get it to focus. And you know, really badly rusted. The real issue is the fittings are just really, really bad. You can see there's a hole in the side where the O-ring is supposed to go. That's just going to tear up any new O-ring that we try to put on there. Um, the sides are really rusted. Um, the back on this one is not so bad. The back on this one is a little worse. Uh, I'll show you one here in a minute that the the back is actually worn all the way through uh, with rust. So what are we going to do about that? Uh, well, the first thing is I want to just clean up this rod a little bit. And we'll show you how I'm going to do that. And we'll see how bad off it really is. You know, there's some pretty bad spots on there. To clean these up, I'm going to use something that's called a surface prep pad. But it's basically a really heavy-duty um, Scotch-Brite wheel with some abrasive embedded in it. It does a really good job on paint and rust. And it really, it doesn't take much metal off. Yeah, you can, dang it now, okay. It just doesn't take much metal off. So let's see what it does with it. 
Okay, well, I mean, that's pretty good. It's the back side of the cylinder. It, it cleaned it up, I think, pretty well. I realize this is bad. You know, having uh, rusty spots in the in the rod like that, it, it, this rod can't be service in service for very long like that. It's just gonna it's just gonna destroy the seals, but and it's gonna leak. But I don't wanna I don't wanna replace it right now. Um, Massey Ferguson gets, I don't know, 170 dollars $150 for a new rod. Uh, the seal kit is $43. Um, and, you know, again, the thing hasn't done any work. I really, I don't know what condition the hydraulic system is in. So I'm going to do a quick and dirty refurb on this. I'm going to replace these guys with some fittings I've gotten from uh, Surplus Center and and go on with it. So this is this is probably the second worst cylinder on the loader. Let's look at the worst cylinder on the loader. So this is the worst cylinder. You can see the pitting is really bad. It goes all the way around. Um, the, the gland on it is pretty badly rusted. The gland on it is pretty badly rusted. Um, rusted into the tube. When I run, you know, I can only get my finger down there a little ways. But when I run my finger around in there, I can feel grooves uh, in the cylinder. You can see the, the piston is pretty badly scored. There's actually little bits of rust on the bottom of the rod where it's steel, not chrome. So, and this one clearly needs to be replaced. I have a replacement uh, cylinder for this, um, for this cylinder that came with the that came with a tractor. Why am I doing this, you ask? Well, I needed a practice one. I needed one that I could figure out how to take it apart so I wasn't doing it for the first time on one that mattered. Um, so you can see here I've cut off the, the fitting that was here and gotten it pretty well flat. I'm just gonna weld um, a weld-on bug onto there to uh, make that connection. This is the one that came off of there. You can see the front. This is the one that came off of there. You can see the front is not too bad, but there's actually a hole worn in the back of the fitting, rusted right through. So, yeah, that's no good. The only downside is the ones I've got are straight fittings. This one's in actually pretty good shape comparatively. But again, you know, this was the practice. Uh, this was the practice fitting. So the idea was to try it out on this one, try the repair out on this one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna weld fittings onto this um, just to see if I could get it apart and put it back together. So a little bit about how to take these guys apart. It's not super obvious, at least it wasn't to me, how to get it apart. And first of all, you know, I mean, these guys, if you're just replacing the seals, you wouldn't need to cut these obvious, off, obviously. First of all, there's a set screw in the side of the cylinder, and that goes into this groove on the gland. And the gland has a ring on top of it that holds it in place. The way to get this ring out so you can get the gland out is you have to push this gland down into the cylinder a little bit so you can get the ring off. 
So first, remove the set screw, and I, I actually had to use a Torx bit because it was too rusted to use a uh, an Allen hand wrench. Remove the set screw. Then I made a little clamp-on device here. It's a piece of one-inch EMT cut in half, short. It's only an inch long or so. And then this is just a piece of scrap pipe I had uh, in the shop, also cut in half. You're going to cut these pipes in half because you have to put it around the rod with the rod inside the, inside the cylinder. And the idea is that these pieces of metal are going to push down on the lip of the gland. You, you can see, I, you know, I mean, I use different tools and stuff to try to push that down. Just a punch. I think I use this giant nail. Uh, nothing was really pushing it down, so I realized I needed to get it. So it was pushing all the way around, and that's what uh, this guy does. And so just uh, clamp that around. And I took the I took the uh, grease fitting out of the bottom of the cylinder, uh, put it on the concrete someplace safe, and just wailed on it with a sledgehammer. And that pushed that gland into the cylinder just a little bit so I could get that that ring out okay that's how you do that then uh, you can take the you pull the once you get the ring out you can pull the whole uh, rod out of the cylinder with the gland and the and the piston all attached and everything so that's how I got those apart uh, not a big deal um, it took me a while to figure out how to do it um, it, it, it's similar to the, uh, to how they do that with the, um, John Deere cylinders, but there's no secondary ring in there. So, and you know, the reason I had such a hard problem with it is because this gland was just rusted into the cylinder. It doesn't even want to go in there now. Yeah, I mean, I can't put this thing back together and have it work at all. So, like I said, it's just a practice. Um, I'm going to clean the groove up here a little bit, try to get the rust off of the inside of that. I wish I had one of these that would go inside there, but I don't. Um, yeah. And then uh, I'm actually going to put it back together because I do want to see, you know, after I weld these, if the piston goes back down inside the rod without binding up. I'm worried about this warping when I weld it. Don't know what else to say about that. Um, making a little bit of progress, so I hope this helps somebody. Aloha. Okay, well, I spoke too soon. I took all the cylinders off the loader. And this one, the ring down there, the gland, is so corroded that the wiper has just come out of it. So you get to see how I take it apart. Yay! Okay, first step, which I've already done, is to take out the uh, set screw, which was in there. It's stuck on there, so I'll take it off later. Um, then we take our tool. Uh, I mean, you can use whatever you got. I just happen to have this. This is a piece of EMT that I cut to about one inch and cut in half. So those go on there. And the purpose of that on the other one was to kind of stand off the this piece, which is the part doing the actual pushing, to stand it out away from the wiper. But, you know... This one doesn't have a wipe, so it doesn't really matter. And I'm just going to hose clamp this on here. And the important thing is that this piece is longer than, like, 
that distance there because um, because you want to be able to push with the rod end you want to be able to push with the rod end onto the um, the gland and these hose clamps they just they just kind of hold them on I think the idea of this pipe when I cut it was inch and a half. It's actually a piece of a, a shipping crate that a mower came on. Just want to make sure that's over the over the piece of EMT that's inside there, so it clamps the EMT. Yeah, and it still slides pretty easily. That's good. I like that. on here this is just to keep the top from splaying out too much okay take that outside and wire with a hammer and you might wonder how you know when you've hit it far enough you can look in the set screw hole and see the ring where the set screw rode you can see that going inside there it's moved maybe half a millimeter now Yeah, now I can't even see it, so it is as far down there as it needs to go. Now we can take this off. I don't know, I think if I had a lot of these to do, I would have to have a heavier duty piece of pipe. This this uh, shipping crate pipe is just pretty flimsy. Okay. Got some light in there. Show you what's happened. Okay, so looking inside there, you can see a gap right there. This is the ring. And then that's the gap above the gland that you just created. So now we should just be able to pull that ring out. Pretty rusty. trying to clean some of the rust off of that ring so it can move a little bit more freely. It's really badly rusted.
You might wonder why I'm doing this. Well, the rod on this one is better, way better than that really terrible one I showed you. And the, the gland on that really terrible one is in way better condition than this, probably the piston as well. So I'm thinking that I might end up having to put this one back into service with that barrel, that gland, and this rod. But we have to get that ring out first. Probably just going to come out in pieces. Oh, it's moving. Yeah, okay. Can spin it around a little bit. That's good. There it is, and it doesn't come off. I mean, maybe you could, but God, the thing is just rusted into a triangle shape. Okay, so at this point, we want to get the gland out and the piston. We just pull the whole thing out. But I don't want to do it right away because I'm afraid that, I'm afraid the inside of that is just corroded. I mean, you can see how bad that ring is. So I'm going to spend a few minutes with a pick. I don't know what else I can use, but I'm hoping this ring isn't going back in. I'm hoping I can use a pick or something to clean the rust bits off of the... Uh, uh, you know what? I'm just going to knock it out. I mean, this thing should not be this hard to move. I'm afraid the problem is that that piston is just totally seized up in there. Oh. <sighs> Oh, it's coming out. You can see the gland coming right there. Oh, crimey. Oh, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't seem that much worse. You know, it's a piece of an O-ring that got ripped off. But God, that gland is just frozen. Ugh.
Yeah, I don't know. That one doesn't feel that much worse than that other barrel. I don't know. I just don't know. Anyway, fun with hammers on a 100 degree day. Okay, here's the results of all of that hydraulic repair. You can see those bungs are welded on there. I did the welds, you know, in a bunch of different stages because I didn't want to put too much heat into there, um, you know, at a time. Uh, we got the new pipes run all around and new hydraulic hoses. This one leaks quite a bit. I didn't quite get a good weld on there, but it will, you know, it leaks everywhere. <laughs> it leaks out of the gland. It leaks the, around the barrel. Um, the ones in the back here, uh, this is the brand new one. And it's in, uh, it's in good shape. Yeah, no problems with it. This one over here, I had to do a little weld repair on the back of this one because it was leaking, but uh, that seems like it's in pretty good shape. There's a little bit of schmoo on the rod, but I don't know, I'll probably just leave that. So, the good news is it works. You know, the, the hydraulics lift and load and do, uh, do everything I want it to do, at least in the loader. Um, I've got this Vevor control, Uh, control valve set up here uh, and you know it's okay it doesn't do multiple functions at once but I do have a, a power beyond set up this this is just an adapter ring there's actually a plug inside here that uh, puts it in closed center rather than uh, open center but yeah I mean so that works just fine and uh, you know, between that and all of the, the hydraulic lines, I'm pretty happy. Um, I've mixed compost with it a couple of times and tried loading mulch. And um, I'm, I'm ready to take the next step, which is to buy new cylinders here. I think I'm going to have to replace these lines. These are only $20 at Discount Hydraulic Hose. The cylinders that I can get from Granger have the the bunks on the top and I'm just not sure these are going to be quite long enough they're pretty tight as it is so um, these two lines on this guy are tight as well so I thought what I would do is get an adapter to hook those two guys together and then and then replace one of these guys or two of these guys with four hoses and get a couple of replacements and put those guys in there Blah, blah, blah. I mean, you know, that's all little bitty details, but um, yeah, that's what I did with that. So anyway, hydraulics are good and time to move on to the next step, which is body work, probably. Aloha.
clearly I got some things to learn about driving, but uh, it works, more or less. I'm going to position the trailer a little bit more this side so I'm not having to mess with that um, sawmill and maybe out a little bit further. But uh, the only thing about it is it tears up the ground. You can see it's pretty torn up. But moving that much mulch with the pitchfork is kind of for the birds. This area does need to get built back up a little bit in here. So um, that's why I chose this spot to park. But I still think those tines are a little bit too long. But that was an even number to cut out of the rebar. So, all right. Aloha.